The appointment of the thrice-cursed Gerasimov to the post of head of the Russian group fighting in Ukraine is clearly the beginning of a new phase of the invasion. At first, a blitzkrieg was planned, successfully failed by the same Gerasimov. After recognizing that this meat grinder was going to take a long time, the angry Kremlin made a bet on Shuravikin, who skillfully roasted and ironed the squares along with the people in Syria. But it also failed to kill the Ukrainian infrastructure. Ukraine has acquired its own air defense systems and learned how to competently shoot down missiles and Iranian drones. The Kremlin has realized another dead end and has now thrown the penultimate card on the table, massive manpower. It is clear that Gerasimov will henceforth be cursed a thousand times, because it is under his order that the general mobilization of the male population of the cave will begin. In addition to the appointment of Lapin as the head of the ground forces, Lt. Gen. Oleg Makarevich was appointed the new commander of the airborne forces. His predecessor, Gen. Teplinsky, was dismissed. They say that the reason for Teplinsky's resignation was his refusal to follow the new adventurous plan of the Blitzkrieg of the General Staff. In fact, preparations are underway for the stage of throwing corpses into Ukraine. What is happening near Bakhmut is a prelude before a big invasion of meat. It will be a corpse tsunami, like in the movie World War Z. Putin needs an offensive, and by February 24, at least some kind of victory. This means that he made a choice, to go to the end. Kiev rejects any negotiations with the aggressor, at least as long as Putin is in the Kremlin, and his entourage demonstrates complete devotion to their Fuhrer. The moods of the elites are monitored at a time, there is not even a glimpse of the idea that they have fallen into fascism and the destruction of Ukrainians as a nation setting is pure Nazism that covered them as degenerates of the 21st century. The same thing is tossing and turning in the red-brown depths of the collector, which means that you will have to fight all this seriously, relatively speaking, to the very walls of the Kremlin. Because after realizing the impossibility of winning this war with the use of living corpses, Putin will reach for the last card, weapons of mass destruction. In the meantime, Putin is shuffling generals and raising the age of conscription into the army from 27 to 30, while ignoring the promise to raise the lower bar from 18 to 21, as previously promised. In addition to total mobilization, increased recruitment by zones will also continue. Not without reason, after all, Prigozhin presented the legend that you can get out of Wagner alive and return to freedom and Deputy Gurulev raised the question of the appearance of Wagnerites in the State Duma as deputies. The General Staff has cancelled deferments from mobilization for fathers with three children, said State Duma Deputy Nina Ostanina and the Military Commissar of Transbaikalia. According to the current law, a deferment from mobilization is given only to the heads of large families with four or more children. So they'll get everyone. Gerasimov lubricates the meat grinder realizing that in the event of total mobilization, there would be no working hands left in the cave. The State Duma set a plan for the adoption of a bill for February, which simplifies the conclusion of employment contracts with 14-year-olds. To get a job, they only need the permission of one of the parents without obtaining the consent of the guardianship and guardianship authorities. As the economic sanctions stranglehold tightens, the problems with filling the budget become more acute. It is officially recognized that a third of Russians depend on state payments, and only 39% live on a salary. And as the crisis deepens, the belligerent state will not be able to fulfill its obligations to pay pensions and benefits. And it will happen in 2023. Non-payment will also affect public sector employees. The collapse will be so swift that it will bury the last glimpses of reason under the rubble. And the conditional 90s will seem like a good fairy tale, because then Russia was officially striving for civilization, but today it personifies the cave savagery and inhumanity. The population, which has no prospects, condemned by the entire civilized world, will begin to actively kill itself. There is only one scenario fork in this horror, which has a very conditional meaning. Will Putin survive? Will he, sitting in a bunker, watch the fall and dismemberment of his zombie empire, or will he himself be killed by that time? But the main prospect is already visible. Left alone against the whole world, the distraught barbarian cave is doomed to defeat. Neither Kim Jong-un, 
nor the Iranian Ayatollahs will help her, and she had no other allies left. Even China turned away. Obsolete empires do not live with such an anamnesis. Therefore, corpse to corpse, dust to dust, with a cry of don't get you to anyone.